everyone and welcome to season two of Breaking Bread. And today we're taking a restaurant tour around Mary Queen of Heaven right here in Brooklyn. So stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Breaking Bread. On today's show, we're going to be hanging out around Mary Queen of Heaven right here in Brooklyn where Breaking Bread's very own Father Jamie is the pastor. And we're going to get a tour of this neighborhood from Father Jamie himself and you're not going to believe this, he's like the mayor around here. But first let's go inside and catch up with Father Jamie. Now I'm so excited to be starting this show in the kitchen of our very own Father Jamie. This place is beautiful. Thank you and welcome to Mary Queen of Heaven and welcome to Father Jamie's Kitchen. Glad to be here, glad to be you here. You like it? I love it. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Thank you. So do you get a chance to get a little cooking on in here? Once in a while. As you know, I mentioned in the last season that I did graduate the Culinary Institute That's and right. I worked for ho in hotels for about 10 years. And when I do have some downtime, which is not that often, Tati, I do put my culinary skills to use. That's right, you're a real chef. So now, there's something I need you to clarify for me, Father yes. Jamie. I always argue that Mary Queen of Heaven is in Marine Park, but apparently I'm wrong. You so are. So what is it? Okay. Everyone always says <laughs> Marine Park, but really we're known as Old Mill Basin. Okay. At one time we were Mill Basin, but when they started to develop the houses and the communities down along Bergen Beach, which mm -hmm. is a little east of here, that became Mill Basin and we became Old, Old Mill Basin. Basin. Got it, got it. So what kind of people are around here? What kind of neighborhood is it? Well, originally we were uh, basically Irish, Italian-Americans, mm -hmm. Jewish, and now recently, over the last 10, 15 years, many Caribbean people have moved into the neighborhood. So it's a very diversified and a great place to live okay. and eat. Great. So there's a <laughs> sprinkle of all kinds of people here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So where's the first place that we're going to? The this first, is your hood. Well, the first place we're going to is actually a gourmet fish store. Okay. And it's the newest uh, restaurant or fish store around in the neighborhood. Uh, but it's a great place. I do mention, I, I blessed the place a couple of years ago, so I do promote it. And I go there a lot because I do like to eat fish. Okay. I'm watching my weight like everyone else. Yeah, well, you know how it is. Working on breaking bread, you oh. can put the pounds on If I look easily. like you, I wouldn't have to worry about watching my weight. Tati. But anyway, I go there about three times a week and have lunch. Okay. And it's a great place. Uh, and it's a, a gourmet fish store, but they also have prepared fish. So you can go in and everyone's in a hurry these days. So well, I love fish, so I can't wait to check out Sea Tide, but we've got a lot more in store for you. And now we're going to check out the first place, Sea Tide Gourmet Fish Store. Let's go. Well, Tati, unlike the streets around the church, they're very quiet. As you can mm -hmm. see, it's very busy over here. Foot traffic, cars, oh, yeah. noise, everything over here. Everyone comes to do their food shopping over here. All right. And this is where I come to buy my fish at Sea Tide. Great fish, fresh. And I'll show you what they have. It looks good from the outside. Let's see what they've got on the inside. Okay. Tide Gourmet Fish Market. Now, Father Jamie, you really know your way around this place, so give us the tour. Yes, I do, Tati. I'm here almost every day for lunch, and as you can see, we have all of our fresh fish here, and what makes this place so unique mm -hmm. is that when you walk in, you do not smell fish. So what are they cleaning this place up with? It's I noticed that. It's not the cleanliness of it. It is very cleanly, right. but it's fresh fish. Okay. Paul, the owner, goes to the fish market every day at 1.30 in the morning in Hunts Point. Wow. And he gets fresh fish, and as you can see, all the fish here is fresh. We have swordfish, we have tilapia, which is very popular today. Right. We have fresh salmon, we have tuna, we have grupa, we have lemon sole, we wow. have uh, all sorts of fresh fish. Tuna, tuna is very fresh. And uh, here at Sea Tide, they have a sushi station, 
and they have fresh tuna and all sorts of fresh raw fish if you like su sushi, nice. which I do. You like sushi. I love sushi. And I see orange roughy over there, which is yes. my absolute favorite fish. It's great. Yeah. And then we also have whole fish here. Some people like to prepare their fish whole. Right. Especially we have a lot of Caribbean people in our parish. Okay. So they come here and they buy the fish whole and they bake it at home. Nice, nice. So there's something for everyone. Oh, sure. All you yeah. have to do is come over here and look at all the prepared food. Whoa. And all you have to do is say, I like one of those and one of these, and take nice. it home. Nice, the selection is huge. The selection Excellent. Is huge. Now Excellent. they have something here that is off the beaten track. This is a fish store, but they've got beef stew and it has a special story. What is it? Well, Condoleezza Rice, right. when she was the Secretary of State, one mm -hmm. of our security detail men, uh, one came of those here. CIA guys? CIA guys. Wow. He came here and uh, he prepared, he bought some food and he brought it back. and. Condoleezza Rice happened to be there. She tasted some of the stew and she liked it so much. She asked him to bring it back the next time he came to New York. Wow. And before you knew it, the Daily News was here and they were on all the front pages yeah. of the uh, newspapers saying that seafood store sells best stew in town. According to Condoleezza <laughs> Rice. Well, she gave it the thumbs up, so it must be good. So now we're going to go into the kitchen where Paul, the chef and one of the owners, is going to show us how to make one of their signature dishes, the Salmone Italiano. So let's go. Let's go. We are in the kitchen with Polly, the chef and one of the owners here. Yes. And what are you going to make for us? Salmone Italiano. Salmone Italiano. How's my pronunciation? Great. <laughs> Sounds Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so what's our first step? What are we working with here? We're working with Scottish, fresh Scottish Norwegian salmon. Okay. Scottish Norwegian salmon is, uh, has, for me, has a lot of omega-3. It's the most fatty fish. And okay. Tastes that's better. That's what we eat fish for, omega-3. Salmon, it. anyway. And that's great for the cholesterol, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so and then, we've got all this stuff laid out. It's a very simple dish. Okay. We use plum tomato, olive oil. We have a chopped garlic, fresh basil, black pepper, and uh, salt. All right. So what do so we do to get started? First, I use wax paper. If you have no wax paper, you don't have to put wax paper. So a little olive oil, just a drizzle. Just virgin olive the, oil. Virgin olive yeah. oil. The best. <laughs> so the wax paper is so the fish won't stick to your paper. It won't pan, stick. Right? And for some reason, it tastes better this, uh, when you do it with wax paper. Okay. I'm going to remember if that. You want, then you get the, the salmon. Two. And you put it in the oven. You cook it at 350. For how long? For about uh, 25 minutes. Okay. Now you bake that, you don't broil it, you bake it. No, you bake it, 350 is about 25 minutes. Very good. Then you got your tomato, you chop up about four or five plum tomatoes. Right there. And, uh, in the pan, and you just put everything in together. You put in your olive oil, put in your tomatoes, chop fresh garlic, this is really easy. You just throw everything Very easy. in. Yeah. A little bit of black pepper. Right. So it doesn't matter what ingredient goes in first. No, it doesn't matter. Everything okay. goes together. Healthy and easy. I like that. And uh, fresh basil. There's nothing like fresh basil, especially in the summertime when you grow your own. Yeah. <laughs> fresh herbs are the best. And then you just uh, sauté for about six, seven minutes. Okay. Very healthy. Saute it a little bit. And, uh, wow, smell that garlic? I smell yeah. it already. I smell the basil too. Not for nothing, fresh basil smells completely different from the dried out oh, stuff. No question about it. And this a little is garlic. good enough for about, for do two pieces of salmon, about eight to ten ounces. Okay. It takes just a couple more minutes, and this is uh, pretty, once the tomato gets a little soft. And then in the meantime, our fish is baking. The fish is baking meantime. That's why I would start doing this after the fish is cooking for about 15 minutes. Right. Everything comes out together. This is just about done. We take it out of the oven. Should have been cooking for about 25 minutes. Right. This is what it looks like. Looks good. Yep. And this is Plain, nothing on nothing it. Nothing on it. Right. Very healthy. Then you just so put all your... Our tomatoes are ready. Plum tomato. Mmm, that smells fresh good. Fresh basil and uh, garlic. This is light and filling. You're right. Very this is light, a perfect healthy. summer dish. Very nice. A little more fresh basil for garnish. Put the fresh basil in there. Aha. Wow. Wow. 
to, to put uh, a few Galleta olives in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what it looks like. Perfect. I don't know about you, Tati, but that looks good. And I think we should... Taste. Taste it. it smells good, too. It does. I get love salmon. That. Make sure you get some of that sauce yeah. on there. That's and the if best you eat this part. twice a week, that you'll gain 20 years of life. I know, lives to 100. So if you're going to live to 80, you'll live to 100. So this. fresh, mm -hmm. delicious. It is fresh and delicious. It tastes it's a like lot garlic, of flavors. The herbs, the tomato. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And it's light and cool. It is the perfect summer dish. I can't wait to try to make this at home. So now we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more culinary delights, and I'm going to keep on eating. Me too. Yeah. Father Jamie, I'm having a good time in your neck of the woods. Now, I know where you get all your fresh fish from. Now, what's this place? This is Landy's Pork Store, and this is very well known. They've been around for 81 years. Wow. People come from all over Brooklyn. Even though I live a couple of blocks away, I'm here every day. Okay, so is this one of the places where you get your ingredients for your masterpieces? Yes, whenever I'm preparing dinner, pasta, cheese, meats, everything. Let me go get some tips. Well, Tati, even though I come to Landy to buy some of my pastas and meats, I do come here to buy some appetizers and side dishes. Everything looks beautiful in here. You know, sometimes I don't have enough time to prepare a full meal. Right. So I come here. Doesn't this stuff look great? It looks great. Everything looks really delicious. I tell you, some really of my delicious. favorite items here, the prosciutto balls and the spinach balls. Mm. They make them fresh here every day. In fact, whenever I go up to my sisters in Connecticut, my niece says, Uncle Jamie, are you bringing the rice balls and the prosciutto balls and the spinach balls? I said, of course, of course. Well, it's got to be good if kids remember <laughs> it. You know that. And you know, these things take a long time to, to prepare, so you come here and no one even knows the difference. They don't, do they? Not at all. Sometimes I, they ask me, Father, did you <laughs> make these? And I say, yes. A little white a little white. You know what? I had a feeling that that was the case because I recognized that eggplant campanata. Uh, we had that at your house, didn't we? Yes, we did. And I, Did I tell you I told you I made it? You know what? You kind of talked around it. Now oh, that I think okay. about it, now right. that I think about it. But everything looks beautiful It's wonderful. Here. It's nicely presented, but also when you, they have a lot of prepared pastas, but I like to make my own pasta. Yeah, let's like yeah. carry it away. Pick right. up a couple side dishes and things that take a lot of time. And now, this is the place you buy your meat. Yes. So let's go look at the meat. They make all their meats here, and I'll come over and I'll show you. Nice. Well, Tati, as I said earlier, this place has been here a long time, 82 years, in fact. Wow. Mr. John Landy, the grandfather, started this then. And it's been popular ever since. Great. That's his grandson that you were talking yes. to before? Yes. Wow. Three generations. Wow. So what do we have over here? Well, this is our salad section, marinated salads. You know, in an Italian uh, meal, you have to have olives. Yeah, of so there are all sorts of <laughs> olives marinated. We also have stuffed peppers, stuffed cherry peppers marinated and roasted peppers, with a lot of garlic, marinated artichoke hearts. These are good for appetizers when you're yeah, preparing an Italian meal. Yeah, this is definitely stuff you pick up. You oh, don't yes. try to make this at home. No, and then of course they also have their basic salads. They have uh, macaroni salad, coleslaw, potato salad, and they make a fresh tuna salad here, made with fresh tuna. Good barbecue sides. Right. But I come here mostly for the meats, and as you can see, they have wow. all different uh, cuts of meats here, and they've been here a long time, so all their meat is fresh. They do a big volume, so every day people come in and they're getting fresh meat. I buy my steaks here, my ribs, my chops, but I come here when I make my meatballs. Oh. And to make a good meatball, you have to have pork, veal, and beef. Got and it. I get it freshly ground, mix it together, yeah. and it's great. Everything is fresh here. I mean, the Everything. cuts of steak are beautiful. The flank is gorgeous. Yeah. Even the chicken is oh, good. Yeah. It all looks great. And it's yeah. fresh. You know when something is fresh. You, you know can see it. You can see it. Right. This isn't the kind of meat that you buy it and you go home and you cut into it and it's gray on the inside. This is Not like the all. good stuff. You can really tell. Now over here we have some Italian squash. They call it guguzza. I was looking at that. Yes. And what it is, is it's, it's squash and it's summer squash. And what Italians do is we slice, we dice it up, we right. boil it, and we make it with tomato sauce and spaghetti. It's okay. out of this world. Kind of like a vegetarian sauce. Right, exactly, so exactly. So what, what does that taste like? What would you compare it to? Almost like eggplant. Almost like, like an eggplant. eggplant. Right. Okay. And this is, this is new. I've never <laughs> seen this. It says mother-in-law's tongue. It's a, like a, a pasta. pasta. And it has all different colors. It makes it a little dizzy, right? It does make it dizzy. I guess that's why they call it mother-in-law's tongue. 
Why? Because mother-in-laws make you dizzy? Sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, don't have a mother-in-law. Me neither. <laughs> and let's hope the one that I get doesn't make me dizzy, that's for sure. Also, if you want fresh mozzarella, they make it every day. They have fresh mozzarella, they have smoked mozzarella, and they also have the mozzarella in salt water, which mm. is very good. And they make it all here, right? All here. And this here is, uh, they call it prosciutto bread, and it's made with lawn, and it's another calorie counter. That's but it's excellent. It's the, excellent. You're not thinking about calories, not, not dreaming about calories when you pick some of those up. <laughs> Nothing in this place you count calories on. Wow. Nothing. Well, everything looks so delicious and so good. I'm ready to taste some food. Okay, we'll pick out a few things and we'll try them. Good, let's go. Okay. Well, Tati, they were kind enough to give us a few samples, so I don't have to go home and make these. Sounds good. <laughs> well, I'm going to taste what I haven't had already had at your house. Oh, that's a potato croquette. Mm -mm, good. Mm -mm, this is good. And these here, are, this is a rice ball, mm -hmm. a uh, zucchini stick. I'm gonna try this. Of next. course, everything is fried, but mm. once in a while we can cheat. Like we said, this is not the place <laughs> where you come in starting to count calories. And we have uh, prosciutto balls and also the spinach balls. It's delicious. Aren't they great? Mm -hmm. potato, potato bread is different. There's like cheese in it. You, they put cheese, parsley, and potato. Delicious. They flour it and, and fry them. Well, no, you have to try some, too. You're not going right. to get me fat all by myself. Well, I'm going to be good. I'm going to have a zucchini stick. Fair enough. Mm. Father Jamie, I see what you mean about this place now. You can't go wrong. So whenever you're in the neighborhood, you got to stop by Landy's, get some fresh meat, take some stuff home, and you can pretend like you made it, too, like Father Jamie does. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep on eating. I think I need some more of these. Can you get me more? Of course. Okay. This is Marine Park, Father Jamie. This is Marine Park. Okay. Not too far from the church, but right. far enough. But it's a great place because it was one of the first Italian restaurants in the neighborhood. That's why people come all the way over here. Oh, yeah. And they also have a small catering hall. So uh, a lot of parishioners have baptismal parties and small weddings and confirmation parties and birthday parties. Sounds good. Sounds and the good. food is great. Let's check it out. Let's go. It's got to be if people are coming all the way over here. <laughs> We're back and we're at Michael's of Brooklyn in Marine Park and they specialize in southern Italian cuisine here. We're here with chef owner John Kakasha who will prepare some delicious dishes for us today. Yeah. So how long have you guys been here? 44 years. Okay, well now you look kind of young so I don't think you were here for 44 years. How does that work? Well my dad started in 1964 a little pizzeria. Okay. And little by little made the restaurant bigger, catering hall bigger, other dining rooms and here we are 44 years later. Okay. Me and my brother now own the place, and my nephew is also involved in it. And fourth generation was just born three weeks ago. We don't know if he's going to be in the restaurant business, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> I love restaurants that have been passed down from generation to generation because you know the food has to be good because you just can't stay in business if it's not. And yeah. this is one of the most popular Italian restaurants in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you come here a lot, Father Jamie. Yes, right? I do. Yeah. And a lot of parishioners come here also because it was one of the first, and they still come here. Very nice. Okay, so what are you guys going to make today in the kitchen? Uh, <laughs> we're going to prepare a few appetizers, which you're going to have, and then we're going to go in the kitchen and prepare chicken cardinale. All right, well, you guys get to work, and I'll handle those appetizers for us. We're ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're here in the kitchen of Michael's Restaurant with Chef Owner John, and he's going to prepare a nice entree for Tate Tea. What are you preparing, John? Chicken cardinale. I like that name. So what goes into this dish? Okay. I'm going to start off with some chicken cutlets. Chicken breast, we're gonna put in an egg batter with a little Parmesan cheese, a little parsley. We're gonna whip this up. So you coat the chicken with that, that batter. Okay, and we're gonna take the chicken, dredge it in flour. Now, why do you dredge it in flour, John? So it makes like a, it makes like a glue, like the egg stick better to the chicken color when you're frying it. Okay, okay. Fudge, you bring that pan over. We'll saute this in hot olive oil. Or vegetable oil, nice and hot. The oil has to be real hot, right, John? 375 at least. Okay, we'll saute this. In the meantime, I'm gonna be making the sauce. Put a little olive oil in there. Okay, I'm gonna add a little prosciutto. Little onions. 
Let's saute them a little bit. I'm gonna get some mushrooms. Put a little masala wine. Now, is that a sweet wine? Sweet. Dry masala. Dry masala. Okay. okay. I'm gonna saute it a little bit. That burn off all the alcohol. All the alcohol. Well, Jamie, you can put the chicken in there now. Okay. Pull it right out. Nice golden brown. Strip off the oil. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back and put the rest of the ingredients. A little bit of butter. A little bit of fresh basil. A little bit of tomatoes. That smells good. A little parsley. A little chicken stock. Finish cooking it off with the chicken stock. Now I'm gonna put it back in a flame. Okay. Now how long you let that simmer? About five, About minutes? five minutes. And then it's ready to go. Then it's ready put to it go. on a plate, garnish on a plate, it. Go. Well you have to put the mozzarella on it and roast the peppers on it. You do that here and let you it heat up right a little bit so the mozzarella melts yeah. a little bit. So while Father Jamie is in the kitchen flexing his culinary chef skills, I'm gonna try some appetizers and here they come now. Fried eggplant is my absolute favorite. And apparently, I'm gonna have a new favorite, the stuffed zucchini. So like he said, this has mozzarella and roasted red pepper in it. So let's start with that. And since it's just me, I won't be shy. I'll just go ahead and dip it right in there. Oh my God, that sauce is incredible. So now I'm gonna work on this octopus and see how this is. I know I'm not saying it right, but. Woohoo! This is so good. I think it's the celery or something in it. Mm. Mm. I'll keep working hard. Check out Father Jamie, still working hard. How's it look? Looks good. Smells good too. The mushrooms will melt down a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the mozzarella, put it on top. We roast the pepper. Okay, we're just about ready. Okay, I'm gonna take the chicken. Wow, that smells good. Put the plate there. We'll let this reduce a little. we we'll get our garnish ready. Fresh basil. Little... Now that flour is edible, right? Edible orchids. Organically grown. Okay, now we're going to take a little sauce. Garnish on top. And that's it. That's very good. And here we have a nice entree for Tate to try out in the dining room, and uh, she'll let us know how it tastes. Chef John, thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay. Well, Tati, now we come to the best part of the show. Right. So this is what you were making? Yes, chicken cardinale, and I like that name, by the way. Yeah. Why? Well, you figure it out. A cardinale? Maybe someday. Me? You never know. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one, Father Jamie. <laughs> Let's taste this. And I had a hand in this, you know. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Let me let me check out your skills. Oh my gosh, this is so good. <laughs> this is really good. Now, I know you were in there working really, really hard, but I was out here working really hard on those appetizers. Well, I think I was working a little harder than you, Tati. It was hot in there. Okay. Well, maybe you were working a little harder than I was, but we cannot leave Michael's without you seeing the bakery. There's so much more than what we've seen you, and you've got to take a peek at their beautiful pastries before we end the show. We're going to keep working. Oh, I'm going to town on this one. This is to die for. This is amazing. 
<laughs> Father Jamie, the food at Michael's was so good. I love that sauce. Wasn't that great? That was good. Now, I hope you have room for some dessert. Whoa, I don't know. Well, here we are at Michael's Bakery, and they have fantastic desserts. If this is anything as good as the restaurant, I think I'm in trouble. It's going to be better. Oh, boy. Okay, Father Jamie, Michael's Bakery. Now, this is your favorite part. Oh, it sure is. Look I love my sweets. Look at the selection. Oh, they look great. Oh, so pinoli cookies. Right? Whenever you go to an Italian bakery, you have that pinoli cookie. Those are those yummy almondy oh, cookies, right? Delicious. I love they those. They melt in your mouth. I love those. Rainbow cookies. Okay. Now, those are my favorite, my childhood favorite cookies. And biscotti. Perfect. I like to dip them in the wine. We gotta try that sometime. In wine, I usually just dip mine in coffee. In sweet wine for at the end of the meal, they're great. Ooh, uh -huh. something new to try. And of course, you always get a cake. Right. But when you come to an Italian bakery, you have to have pastries. Right. Uh -huh. And what do we have to have? A cannoli. Of course. And a sfogliatelle. Are those those things you eat for breakfast oh, in Italy? You told yeah. me about. They drink them. They eat it with coffee. It's the best. Okay, so then let's order. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to have a few pinolis. Yep. We'll have a few rainbow cookies, a few biscotti. How about and, uh, two pinolis? Two pinolis, yeah. And one suya dough. We're going to split that. Mm. Oh. Nice. They look good. Everything looks great. What are you going to start with? Oh, I think I'll try a cannoli. Okay. I'm going to have a rainbow cookie. These are my childhood favorites right here. This looks excellent. It does. This is very, very fresh. Nice and crunchy. When the shell mm. is crunchy, cream is fresh, out of this world. That's a perfect cannoli. I got an espresso. Did you get anything? No, thanks. I think I had enough today. Yeah, you know what? I am stuck. <laughs> I am stuck. Everything around Mary Queen of Heaven has been wonderful, Father Jamie. Thanks for the tour. Thank you. Come anytime and tell everyone about Mary Queen of Heaven. I will. So join us next time on Breaking Bread. I'm Tati. And I'm Father Jamie. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.